Welcome to my next webinar. This one has got to be one of the most exciting ones as we celebrate, um, I guess, you know, the, the launch of the Barbie film. And hasn't that been a massive impact? So today I'd like you to welcome Natasha and Jess, who are joining me to talk about this brilliant activation and what I'd like to refer to as clever partnerships in smart places. So why don't we begin I love it. by talking to um, the fact that Grilled mm -hmm. and Batman was probably the first place to start and yeah. then you went into Barbie. Care to share, Natasha? Um, I'm, I love working with Grilled as a partner. They're just incredible. But um, Batman was a labour of love. When I first started looking at QSR, um, when it comes to any film partnership, we're always looking for authentic narrative. We're always making sure that we're talking to a consumer in a way that it kind of disrupts their everyday behaviour, but not in a way that it's going to disrupt them too far left. So what we like to do is look at um, a partner, explore what their voice is, explore what they do that's unique. And so when I looked into Grilled, I started to kind of brief out and create what would be a pitch deck effectively. It was, what's their, not, what's their voice on their social channels? What does it look like when you receive an EDM from them? What does it look like when you go into store? So I could really kind of get into the, dive deep and get into who they are and what they are. So when I pitch or create the pitch document, it feels authentic to them. So they receive it kind of going, yeah, we can really see this coming to life. So that's coming down to mocking up an EDM. They're mocking up their social channel to make it look like Batman's taking over their social channel. So when we pitch it into the brand, they really feel they can see their brand aligning with a film. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what is true to any film or any brand you want to bring on board for a film. Mm -hmm. Grilled's logo, um, Batman was black and red. Um, it was a palette that could not deter from it. So I really loved the idea of kind of diving into that and staying true to it. And um, Batman was a little bit dark and twisty. And we love Chris, we love, we love it. But it was, you know, on the edge where you kind of go, oh, it's a little bit. Um, that's when Grilled just shone. They have a really unique voice. They like to be a little bit edgy. They like to be a little bit different. And so when we brought this idea to them, um, we really kind of brought to life the Bruce Wayne burger in a way that is unique. So it was all about Bruce Wayne in store and then you became Batman by eating the burger. So that was the kind of ethos and the, the story behind what that burger was. So then to get to Barbie, what was the thought process and the process for that partnership to come I mean, about? Dark and twisty to <laughs> light and pink, you don't see the jump. Um, we, we, having worked with them, we knew they liked to challenge. Um, we had been talking to, we, we, I never like to do a partner as a one-stop shop. I like to bring a partner on as a journey that will be for the right film will be a good fit for a second role and third and fourth. I've worked with partners on multiple films before and it, we create a new narrative. Um, we always like to look at a brand's objectives. Having worked with them on the Batman, we had the um, beauty of having that open conversation and be able to sit and go, what are your objectives? What are you looking to do in that quarter? And um, so then we can really bring to them ideas that would make sense. Um, when we first brought Barbie, it was all things pink, but it was all about diversity and inclusion and a narrative and a voice that really speaks to their consumer. And so the authenticity was there already. And then it was kind of over to Grill to take it to the next level, which they really did. Right, so, well, Jess, how different was Barbie to any other partnerships that you've managed? I think what it has in common to start with is the fact that, like Tash has just said, it's an ongoing partnership, so you're constantly looking for ways to work together and collaborate. So we had that as a great foundation, a great place to start, thanks to the Batman. And then, while there was a bit of a hiatus between the two titles, um, we really leapt in, and this was a full-scale campaign that I had never experienced before. Um, the amount of work that went into something that's only in market for five weeks, <laughs> I'd never experienced before. Never been part of such global mass hysteria around a film, let alone anything else, so that was really unique. But then something that I also really enjoyed was internally I got to work with so many different business units that mm. I normally wouldn't have exposure to. So it's not every day that you just change the entire menu and introduce Pink Burger, um, but it meant that I got to work with our menu team, our supply team, our operations team. So I really enjoyed that opportunity. 
the beauty of this partnership was because we'd already had that conversation, we're already in conversation to a consumer. It seems quite distant between two campaigns, but realistically, we've been working on this campaign for I over keep, a year. I keep seeing the same people that I could have grown a baby in the same time. Yep. And I have Didn't now really. a Barbie baby. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So I, I wouldn't even know where to start. I mean, if you haven't really, um, you know, done this before, did you, how did you unpack it all? And what was the process of going back and forth in terms of concepts, in terms of approvals? What, what was that like? I think it's actually a really fun process to be part of. So while yes, there was a lot of foundational work that was done, what you have to do is really get to know the title as well as you can. So that way you can take it back to the business and then sell it in. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was, while well, there was not much available at any point throughout this process, um, <laughs> it was connecting with what we knew mm -hmm. and how that would make sense for our customers. So then to take those ideas and ideate and concept and come up with these awesome ideas that we then shared back with the Universal team. Um, and I think Tasha is such a, a creative, brilliant mind. So. Um, it was a match made in heaven, really, um, our teams and, and Tasha's side as well. So you really have to just lean into that process and trust your gut as well, because when you don't have a lot to work with, if you know your customer and you know semi what the title is about, then I think you can really make it work. Yeah, I think we were always, we brainstormed together from the very start. It was never, we were um, lockstep with each other. So if there was anything that either business needed, we just picked up the phone to each other and we kind of like, we need that we're thinking of this now this concept or there was never an or there was always awkward conversations you have to have in partnership sometimes mm. when you've like, when you've got that foundation that trust with each other it's not an awkward conversation because mm. you can have that conversation and really kind of dig deep and brainstorm together but I mean we had some fun we were most of our meetings we'd have weekly whips and there were a lot a lot of them were just fun and brainstorm and we've come up with some wild ideas thinking of what we started with to what we ended up with it's um it's one very different but in a very barbie core way that we would never have even envisaged at the very start do you think totally yeah totally right. so there would have been um different types of i guess stores in terms of the network or stakeholders there would be franchisees as well as corporate stores so when did you bring them along in the journey? What was that like? Was there any challenges? Yeah, it's a tricky one to, to get that balance right. But I think as a business, you need to make a call on what you're pursuing and then kind of just not hope, but know that, okay, you know your customers, but you also know your business partners really well as well. So they trust you, so there's a level of trust there as well. Um, and then bring them on board, sell the idea, how, how you see it working. Um, and then they really, not accept it, but they grow to love it too. So speaking of stakeholders, there were so many stakeholders for, that had to be managed as part of this process. So it was all the internal teams that we touched. So marketing and digital supply, operations, IT, finance, legal, they're all stakeholders as well as the company owner. So we're still a founder-led business and he is the biggest stakeholder in this whole campaign. But then we're also talking about managing stakeholders on the other side mm -hmm. of the fence. So that's working with Tasha yep. and making sure that everything that we're doing is in line what, with their expectations. Mm -hmm. And then we're also pitching work out to external agencies as well. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of people to be managed as part of this process. And I think that is probably what was almost most time consuming, yep. but so rewarding when you take a step back and see what you've achieved together. And so brilliantly managed. I mean, Jess is, Jess is incomparable when it comes to project management. And so when Jess has a timeline and a deadline, I'm confident in knowing that that's exactly what we need to work to. There's never any kind of um, gray area when it comes to that. We knew where we, were, where we both were at. We had open communication the whole way through, but also, um, very kindly grilled pulled me along on the journey as well from a studio perspective i have for this particular title on my side of the fence i had not only universal pictures because they locally distribute the warner brothers product but also had the warner brothers studio i also then had mattel so there was a couple of stakeholders that i had on my side that would touch approvals and then i would then have to go back with feedback and so um we kind of i suppose cut some of the more time pressing pieces by bringing me along the journey so when it came to outside agencies we would go together and we would then pitch together so I would be film and then Jess would do all things grilled but then when we're pitching to a third party they really feel like we come lockstep together and so then it's one unit and so it kind of really really helps when it comes to creativity and then um, 
I mean, nothing, if nothing else, it, create, it creates for us um, an open dialogue. So then for you, Natasha, you would have had the same sort of workload with all the other partners. Yes. Right. And multiple titles. So it wasn't just this title I was working on. I was straddling, oh yeah, at the time I was straddling. Um, so when we first started talking, it was a year ago. So I was working on things like um, Black Adam, Shazam, um, you name it, all those films that were coming up before Barbie even came to the for all, what we were working in the background on product and names and design and so things like them. Um, I think you're now au fait really well with what's film product and what is core product. Yes. So it's um, it's been a very kind of um, very quick learning curve for Jess when it comes to what's a mm -hmm. franchise and franchise versus the film art. Um, I think you could do that at the top of your head now. And yeah. The colour scheme, the Pantone colours. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, Which is so, so great because I've learned so much from Tasha in this short amount of time. And that also cr creates processes that are so much more efficient because mm. I can see things how Tash is going to see them. Mm. I can preempt it and go back to whoever I'm working with, whether it's internal or external, and go, okay, before we even put that in front of Tasha, you need to change X, Y, Z, and then we're, we're, we're rolling. I mean, Jess uh, knows a legal line and a classification symbol uh, like <laughs> no one other. Um, but also, I think when it comes to that, having a partner um, like Grilled and Jess, knowing what I was already working on, other films and then I mean I had 11 brand partners on this title that I was working on so some came in globally some obviously were local mm. but it's managing and not everyone was going to the scale that we were doing with with grilled in any way shape or form right. but it's still a level that still needs a, a lot of quite work. overwhelming right so um like when I think of grilled as a QSR they pretty much have a very full I guess a very full calendar as a QSR with a very, um, I guess, uh, with direction in terms of what their menu is. So to come along and say, well, I'd like to change that for five weeks. Um, and this is what we're thinking. How receptive were the teams who were not generally involved with these sorts of partnerships? How receptive were they to? They were great. They were really, really great to work with. I think what we had on our side was a bit of time. Mm -hmm. So things don't just magically appear on a menu. You, you need a lot of time to concept new ideas and also just to print the menus and get them out to all the restaurants. There's about 165 restaurants in the grill network. So it takes a lot to get those out. But the team was so brilliant to work with and so willing to push the label on this. Um, they were very keen to do things for the first time, which we had stipulated from the outset was going to be a mandatory. We couldn't just show up and do something that was a bit weak, but we had to go full on with this campaign. So we pretty much said up front, it needs to be a pink burger bun. Yeah. And <laughs> off wow. they went and they made it happen. So yep. kudos to them. They were impeccable with how they delivered it. Um, and then again, I was talking about menus, but let's talk about getting pink burger buns out to 165 <laughs> restaurants. That is some effort to get all that out. Wow, for five weeks? For five weeks. Wow, and did they sell out? They did, so we experienced a level of success that we'd never experienced before. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't a massive part of the Batman campaign, but obviously have heard wonderful things about it. Um, but I think this one took us a bit by surprise. So within the first three days of the campaign, we were already calling suppliers and saying, Hey, reprint. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Reprint. And Tasha had warned us. Yeah, I, had, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's quite enough. Well, no, it was more than anything else. Um, we we kind of planned we, we planned for what projected um, from Batman. So Batman was ah. a very shorter window in what we created. So it was very agile, very nimble as to how we brought that to life. Mm. And it was um, very much um, a product that was um, unique, but could be almost quite easily found within supply chain mm. because that's what we needed in such a short window. Whereas this one, we really pushed custom. the envelope and yep. it was very different and very custom. So um, I think what we were, it was after the tour, it was after we had the um, talent tour. I think I had a call, I did have a call with you, didn't I, after mm. that? And I was like, oh, so I think this is really gonna go like nuts. <laughs> um, we, we predicted it was gonna be quite big, but when I got feedback from Mattel as to how gangbusters things were going in market for the core product, and we hadn't, we were a week out from your launch, I was like, oh, this could be great. <laughs> um, which, let's be honest, it is a moment in time to be able to have that success. 
and to really have that moment. But um, hats off to the grill team. They were working tirelessly behind the back, back like literally how do we get this out again how do we how do we get the get, get the product back out well we're talking about this uh i guess all this hype do you want to share with me what we uh what you had mentioned about the burger mania around the world <laughs> yes so we um <clears throat> we went a bit viral which we, it was delightful to go viral um it was organic content on tiktok that just went off like wildfire um, I, I'm not massive on TikTok myself, but it was so great to see that this was going all around the world. So far as to a different territory where there was another QSR that had partnered with Barbie the movie, and we were getting comments in a completely different language on our viral TikTok video, um, basically tagging in the other, um, the other business and saying, look what they've done, how great is this, um, and it's yeah, we've really just found that they've shifted over to our account and kind of asked the other business to do the same, which is a massive compliment. Massive compliment. But Especially... also, we respect absolutely what yeah. they have done and we would never, ever compare ourselves because we're speaking to two very different um, demographics and, and, and markets, so have the utmost respect for what they've done. But it was really fun. Um, Grilled was so respectful, but it was really fun to kind of see those moments. It's very rare you get those moments where effectively, like, we're getting almost trolled a little bit as to yeah. this is what we wanted to see, this is the Barbie burger we deserve in a different country, which is quite funny. Um, but also, um, it was that moment where that isn't something you can plan for. That no. just is something that's totally off. unplanned. And this is why it's so unique in that film partnership world yeah. because you can hope you have something that goes by, or you can hope you have something that really kind of. Um, has that moment where it kind of infiltrates the cultural moment. Um, you can plan as much as you want and sometimes these things don't happen. But I think when you are true to who your consumer is and you're delivering something that's authentic, um, that consumer eats it up. They really want to be a part of it. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Um, but also, <laughs> viral moment, my goddaughter came out from the UK over to Australia and she was like, I need to get me a pig bun. And that was the first thing she said. <laughs> I was like, okay. And she is, I think she's been four or five times now. She absolutely loves it. And she's taken that many photos and some to that many people. But yes, um, it is one thing that all her friends back in the UK are very jealous that she's able to do. Wow. Yeah, I had to question myself a few times in the lead up to our campaign yeah. going live. Is this Barbie movie actually going to be really popular? Mm -hmm. Or is it just because I'm so close to it mm. that I'm so invested in it and I think it's going to be the biggest thing ever? And as it turns out, it pretty much is and has been. And it's been such a joy to be part of that journey and to have a voice at the table, a genuine voice at the table, and deliver that for our customers. Yeah. So what were the actual items and what was so innovative, I guess, for this campaign for you? So it was threefold for us. There was a burger, a pink burger with a pink mayo, um, which is pretty show-stopping for us because we'd never done anything coloured before. Um, that also came in a bundle, so the first time that we'd done a bundle, which I know doesn't sound that exciting and different, but Grilled is typically um, tries to differentiate from some of its competitors and doesn't immediately bundle things up. So that was different for us, and that came in a beautiful um, <laughs> piece of packaging that uh, kind of sold out all over the country, which was unexpected. I think I saw it on eBay at one point. Yeah. <laughs> deep up, well not deep up. Um, but there was also a really special item which we put on, on the menu at our galleries restaurant in Sydney. So we did a complete restaurant takeover mm -hmm. of the site, uh, turned it into a Barbie Wonderland, and we served up our first ever, well, a take on a California roll, yep. um, which is a nice nod to Barbie, who's from California and it's a lobster roll served in a pink milk bun. So it was first, first, and another big first with uh, a, our version of a lobster roll. Right, so I hear this, um, the bundle meal had something, uh, packaging was quite special. Yes. So how special was this uh, packaging? So it is a beautiful pink box that's designed to look like a designer handbag and it's become the most wanted item that I think Root has ever seen. A piece of packaging that obviously comes with a burger, which is great, but you see all sorts of different people walking out of the restaurant with this empty burger yep. box. It's like a handbag, like as a handbag. Right. It's incredible. You were mentioning about the premiere. That, yeah, uh, so there was one of the influencers who attended the Sydney premiere mm -hmm. showed up with the bundle box as their accessory. 
And it was in that moment that we knew, well, not just that moment, but we knew that we had really infiltrated that pop culture moment. Mm -hmm. And that I think is a huge marker of success for us. So being pink, is it still a healthy burger? Yes, it is a healthy burger. It's backed up by all of the nutritional claims. It's high in protein, low in sugar, <laughs> low in fat, all that sort of stuff. I, I'm not a nutritionist, but <laughs> no. it's delicious and it's healthy. Awesome. Who wants to be? I've had about five of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> lucky, lucky. So um, why don't we talk about then, Jess, for those uh, wanting to go into QSR partnerships, what would be your advice to, or guidance to them if they were to consider a film partnership as part of their marketing initiatives? So I think film is really special because film speaks to people in ways that so many other things don't. It connects with people on a really emotional level. And I think um, thinking of partnerships, it's really difficult to do that in an authentic way. And so in knowing your customers and knowing the film as well as you can, I think it creates really special opportunities for a business to offer something to its customers that they can't get elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And to create this sort of cycle of them knowing and loving your brand and connecting with these incredible titles. So we've been lucky to not only do that on one, but two occasions now, and I'm sure there'll be many more in, in the future for us. Awesome. And for you, Natasha, what are the watch outs in partnerships um, based on the partnerships that you've done yeah. for film um, with I, QSR? QSR, I'd say you need to, before you do anything else, don't force a square peg into a round hole. That's the one thing I say all the time. I'm, I never fall foul to trying to push a message that isn't authentically you. If your brand wouldn't sit in, in a cinema and watch the film, then your brand shouldn't be partnering on the film. Yeah, it's not a cash grab. No, because it doesn't do the justice it can do for you. There is a huge amount for you being aligned to a film. You get the beautiful halo effect of the marketing campaign that's in market. And it's not just the paid marketing campaign, there's exhibition partners, there's um, multiple touch points when it comes to this consumer products on a film. So you have all these moments that you can really be a part of if it's the right film touch. That's the first point of call. Mm. Whenever I say, that's the first thing I say to a partner, if you can sit, if you can see your brand sitting in a cinema and watching that film and being a part of that film, mm. then you should be having a conversation with the, with the studio as to what you can bring to life. But also, it doesn't always have to be something that is a, a takeover of the menu. I know that there are smaller brands out there that want to have a taste of what film partnerships can be. You can have a moment, like our first um, dip toe in the water was something that was um, ac um, accessible as part of what was already in the product line. It was created as something very different for the Batman burger, but it was very much um, what could be within their current stable with regards to product and then packaging isn't you know that sort of stuff so think about what have you already got what have you got that's um within your wheelhouse that you can maybe even tweak just a little bit differently that could be unique or you don't have to tweak anything if there is something on your menu that you go this would be incredible as an offer with something yeah. um i mean there's so many films out there now that speak to so many audience groups who've got family titles yeah. and family titles aren't just animated anymore family titles do are the length and breadth of like live animation and cgi yeah. but there's also you can always do films that are a little bit out there and a little bit risky like a horror film we're getting really into horror films now that are a little bit different a little bit quirky but the Australian um, consumer is getting braver to go to the cinema with that. Whereas we used to see it was much more niche mm -hmm. when it came to horror films, that audience group is developing. But also there, there What are, sort of burgers are we talking about there? Or I mean, I, what type of uh, meals? What's a strategic, I guess, um, alliance? How do you go horror? Yes. You could go horror and um, it could be something to, um, I'll have to get on the spot now. It could be <laughs> something that you are go and see the movie and then recover with X, Y, and Z. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Okay, so as a, um, I guess, as a film partner, yeah. do you actually think about the brands as well? Absolutely. To approach. Yeah. So it's a two-way street. And for you, do you think of other films now yeah. that you can align to, Jess? Absolutely. I think. Um, there's always a concerted effort to have a look at the film slate mm. and see what's coming up and what opportunities are on the horizon, which is really important because, no offence Tasha, but 
there are going to be other films out there that make more sense for Grill than what's on the Universal slate or the Warner Brothers slate. Mm. So we have to keep our eyes open for all opportunities. And if anything, I think that makes us a better partner to work with because that means we're going out there getting more experience. And when we come back to the table to do something again with Universal, we'll have a much more rounded set of experience and skills that we can bring to the table. Mm. So do you think um, uni prepares uh, marketing managers for these types of partnerships that are so, so different, so new? Like when I was working with partnerships with Natasha, I certainly did not think of a, you know, a Jurassic Park mobile phone like it just wouldn't happen but I guess how, how can we prepare I guess our marketers in the future to think and align to interesting entertainment partnerships? Um, I think when it comes to university no one the, for my particular role the, you, the, this isn't a course at university you can't <laughs> learn it but I think there is a way that you just have to be agile and brave with how you approach things if your interest, I've always been interested in, I'm really good at bringing people together. And for me, my passion for film has been in my bones since I was 18 years old. So it was a natural fit. When I, when I kind of came into the marketing world, I was like, yeah, marketing's great, but like, what can you do that is like just something different, something new? And so for me, it was all about telling a story. And that for me, at the very heart of every partnership I do, it's about what's the story I'm telling and who am I telling it to? And so when I start there, and then your experience in marketing or your experience in other areas of, of media or creativity or design will all come into that. And it will all really, it, I mean, you need to kind of just jump in feet first, I think, when it comes to film. When it comes to partnerships, because it is that yes. unique moment, yes. but it's also, if it's something that you see out there and you kind of go, I want to put X, Y, and Z on a shelf, mm then put your hand up and, and right. go and ask the person who's doing that job to go, tell me what you do and how you do it. Okay, so Jess, do you think university prepared you for this role in partnerships and in QSR partnerships? Definitely not. I loved my university degree, but I don't think this is where I thought I was gonna end up. I left uni and went into a very traditional marketing job, which I thoroughly enjoyed. But then I realized that my skills were very much grounded in communication and working with stakeholders and probably managing people's expectations. So really lent into that and leveraged my network to land a job at Grilled, working in the partnership space, um, which I've just thoroughly loved for the entire 18 months that I've been with the business. Um, and I think my advice to any budding marketers out there is just keep an open mind. Don't say no to any opportunity that comes your way. And I think that's relevant to both um, your journey as a professional, but also in your work as well. So if we looked at Barbie surface level and went, no, that's not for us, we would have missed out on such a great opportunity. So keeping an open mind. Awesome. Mm. Natasha, mm -hmm. not all, uh, I guess, partnerships are, are successful or has raging successes. So can you speak of anything that didn't quite go to plan, didn't quite you know, work out or, you know, from your personal experience. And what did you learn from that? I mean, um, there's always going to be things that are going to plan. I mean, COVID, unfortunately, did unravel quite a few partnerships. Oh, yes. And you had to have a number of conversations. But I think the bottom line when it comes to any partnership is establishing. You have to be really good at establishing a, a connection and a kind of an authentic voice with your partner. Yes. Because when you then, as we touched on earlier, when you have to have those awkward conversations, you already have a really strong relationship. Oh. So you have to be really good at making that relationship first. But um, if you are open and honest, I come to every partnership. You will never hear it from anyone else but me, but I come to a partner that's, I will always have the awkward conversation. I will always steer them in the right direction. When there are things out of our control, it's not about going to a partner and telling them, it's about sitting down with a partner and going, how do we work through this together so that it delivers on both of the objectives? Mm -hmm. There may be hurt, there'll always be hurdles. You can do any campaign, any campaign that you see, like, oh, this is a raging success. There was hurdles along the way. Mm -hmm. And um, whenever there is something that doesn't quite meet the mark, it should be that it's not about stepping away from that partner or stepping away and not doing film again. It's like, okay, I didn't work on this film. We tried, what were the learnings? Um, was it that we didn't speak to the consumer correctly? Was it that the product wasn't quite right? Mm -hmm. Was it that we picked the wrong narrative of a film. And you sit down and, you're, and if you're honest with one another where that can be, you can really kind of take that to the next level. 
And sometimes there are partners that dip their toe in the water and it doesn't suit them quite right and they go in another direction. But I've had partners that I haven't spoken to in five or six years and they come back going, we're giving film a go again, let's do it. <laughs> because we have that trust and that relationship and I'm kind of, mm. and I say to them, is there anyone else you want to go to? Is, is it, are you coming to us for the film or the studio? And they're like, a bit of both because we've worked with you before and we trust you. Mm. So we know that if it's not quite right, we'll, we'll deliver that together. Yeah, that's awesome. And what about yourself, Jess? Were there any kind of challenges or, um, you know, the, the things that weren't as successful as you'd hoped that you kind of learnt from? I think, yes, absolutely. There are plenty of things that didn't see the light of day, that didn't get over the line, and that's okay. But I think equally you learn as much from success as you do from failure. So for this campaign in particular, we learned how to pivot, pivot really, really fast because things were selling too well. Mm -hmm. And so that was something that had not challenged Grilled as a business before. Mm -hmm. And now we've upskilled and we have that in our artillery, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I think while sometimes we can dwell on what did not go well, mm -hmm. I think you need to take a step back and go, okay, what did go well and how can we make it go better next time? Yeah. I think as well, when it comes to I, I like to turn it on his head. I never like to look at something as a problem. I like to look at something that just needs a solution. So it's not about looking at it going, oh my God, this is a problem. It's looking at it and going, okay, this, is, this isn't quite ideal. So how do we then navigate around it? And so for, for me personally, I think there are so many times where you look at something and just have to a quick no is as good as a yes. And that's something I live and die by in anything I do. Because sometimes you can sit on something for five days that then could have been solved in an hour that then get free drop to be more creative for those next five days and find a solution. Awesome, awesome advice out there. So, can you please tell me, Natasha, <laughs> what do you think of the Como Barbie Hub? It's incredible, I love it. There is literally something, like the film, there's something here for everyone. Um, I love it. I think my favourite has to be the Barbie inspired photos. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is uploading a Barbie inspired Hilarious. photo, yes. Also, I'm not very happy that I only got 36 on the memory challenge. <laughs> I thought it was quite quick. <laughs> I know, right? I know. And there are 57 different types of games. So oh, wow. we are doing a screening tonight. So there'll be five games that our guests will be playing. Cute. Um, so that's awesome. Now, Jess, what do you think of the Como Barbie Hub? I love it. And I think you just said there's 57 games. There's obviously so something from. in the Tasha's point for everyone. So it's really versatile. Not to mention the fact that it's really eye-catching. It's really bright. Yeah. And I want to play. Yeah. I'm here trying to look at you, but I'm, I want to play. <laughs> want to you want to improve your score. Yeah, right. pretty much. Yeah, quite competitive by nature. So that would be a right. Yeah, and I, and I love so it. focused. I'm sorry, I'm so focused. <laughs> it's, it's, it's taking my attention away. And I love how it's kind of, it's so unique. There's like the trailer on there, there's music to keep everyone bopping away. And it's like, it's, it's so complimentary. It's, that I love it when you see things that sit in a space that's inspired by, it's brilliant. Awesome. So thank you everyone for joining us and watching this episode of my webinar. If you have any questions, or you'd like to send a message or a note, please do so. You can do that either through our site or right here in the comments. Thank you.